Welcome back everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about Bible commentaries that were published in 2021. Before I do that, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing videos on biblical studies resources. Uh, please consider clicking the thumbs up button on the video as that helps me out on YouTube and feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. So overall in 2021, I think the publishing industry was a little bit slow. Maybe... Uh, maybe not so bad as, not like 2020, but a little slower than normal, just because of what's been going on in the world the last few years. But I am wondering if next year and the year after, we're going to see a lot of books published, just because people have been spending a lot of time at home and they're writing. <laughs> so it would not surprise me if we saw more resources come out in the next few years, uh, as compared to the previous uh, year or two. So what I'm going to do is show you each volume. I'm just going to briefly talk about it. There's no academic or there's not many academic reviews on these volumes yet. And I'm going to kind of predict which volumes I think might enter the top 10 for that particular book of the Bible. So just a little bit of prediction. And I've, I've showed some of these in previous videos. Um, but if you haven't seen those, everything will be new to you. So that will be nice. All right, so I'm going to start with some, some volumes I have off screen. So earlier in the year, Lexham Academics started publishing commentaries in the EBTC series, Evangelical Biblical Theology Commentary Series. I think I showed these in January or February. These were volumes that were um, rebranded. They were part of a different series. Now they're part of the Evangelical Biblical Theology Commentary Series, and a lot of people are happy that Lexham Academic um, picked them up, and we should definitely anticipate more volumes in this series coming out in 2022. Uh, by the way, um, in a week or two, as of when you're seeing this video, probably probably two weeks from when you're seeing this video, I'm going to do a video on commentaries that are scheduled to come out in 2022. So you can look forward to that. Uh, this one I showed not long ago. This is, I think it's K. Rue. I think that's how you say that. Um, it's a Kriegel publication. It's a combination of exegesis and application. So um, volumes I've seen so far, I think almost all of them have been one author talks about the exegesis and the other author talks about the application. I think that's going to be the pattern moving forward. So this is Psalms. As you can tell, it's not very big, but it's just volume one. So um, there's a few, there's a few commentaries in this series already. That's maybe the fourth or fifth to come out, something like that. Uh, and this one I also showed just, just a couple of weeks ago is when I got it. And it's the Reformation commentary on scripture series. And it's just quotations from the reformers on the book of Matthew. So you can go through, you know, turn to Matthew, uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7, and read the quotations from several of the reformers on every passage. So it reads like a commentary, but it's quotations from the reformers. All right. Okay. I got a few others off camera here. Uh, I don't remember if I've showed this one yet. This is Isaiah in the Tyndale Old Testament commentary series by Paul Wegner. Um, he was at Phoenix Seminary and Moody Bible Institute. So that gives you an idea of some of his theology of Isaiah. So Tyndale uh, in 2021 continued to publish replacement volumes in the TOTC series and TNTC series. And, um, and I know that they will take a similar approach in 2022. So depending on what volumes they're replacing, there could be some very well-reviewed volumes that they're replacing in your Old Testament or New Testament commentary series. So I'll share more about that in a few weeks. Uh, I think I showed this one just recently too. This is a the newest volume in the Belief commentary series by John Knox, uh, Westminster John Knox Press is what it's called. Uh, Amos Young, and this is obviously the book of Revelation. So Amos Young is Chief Academic Officer, Dean of the School of Missions and Theology, and Professor of Theology and Mission at Fuller Theological Seminary. That's quite the title he has there, isn't it? Anyway, the belief. I keep forgetting to show the inside of these commentaries. People have been saying, oops, people have been saying, you need to show the inside of the books more, and I just forget. So, all right. The Exodus volume in the Story of God Bible Commentary series. This is a Zondervan publication. Um, 
it's mid-level design for pastors, but I think people in Sunday school classes and small groups would do would do it just fine with it. No Greek necessary to um, to use the commentaries in the SGBC series. Christopher Wright has done um, has some well-reviewed work out there, so I expect this one to be well-reviewed. So let me just go back real quick and show you TOTC. If you're familiar with those volumes, that's the same. This is a two column series, like the ancient Christian commentary series. Two volumes, passage by passage through the book of Matthew. And the Kru. It's a nice layout. It's two columns. It's a big book, a wide book, but easy to read. And I might as well show you this one. I don't think I opened this one either. The EBTC series. So that's what that looks like. All right. So that takes care of the commentaries that are off screen. Now let's look at the ones that are on screen. Let's start with this one. This was released just a few months ago. David Garland has some very well-reviewed books, including commentaries. I expect this one to be very well-reviewed. Not quite sure if it'll crack the top 10 for the Book of Romans, just because the Book of Romans has some really outstanding commentaries. Um, uh, so, yeah, I just, I don't know. It, I, I imagine this one will get very well-reviewed, whether it will crack the top 10 for books, commentaries on Romans. It's a, that's a different question. Um, he's at Baylor University, so David Garland. A commentary that I expect to enter the top ten at some point on the book of First Peter is Craig Keener's commentary. And it's a standalone commentary, so it's not part of a series, and he just continues his work in writing commentaries. He's just a prolific writer. He's written so many, he's written commentaries on so many books of the Bible now, and I expect new work from him in 2022. If you have some of his, his other books, then I think you'd be familiar with the, the level that, that he writes at. It's not technical. Um, it's heavy on historical background and sociocultural issues. But a person does not need to know Greek in order to use his commentaries. But nevertheless, I would describe it as mid-level, and the target audience is pastors. So that's Craig Keener from Baker Academic. The Gospel of John by Karen Jobes. Karen Jobes has written some excellent commentaries, some very, very well-reviewed commentaries on Esther and First Peter. And this is the second volume released in the Through Old Testament Eyes commentary series. So it's a uh, Kriegel at the publication of Kriegel Academic. And the series reminds me a little bit of, of work that G.K. Beale does. I'm not aware that he's going to contribute any volumes in this series, but um, there's an emphasis on understanding the Old Testament background for whatever book of the Bible is being discussed. So subtitle here is a background and application commentary. So you do get, you do get um, conversation and dialogue on the relevancy of the text for today. Uh, easy to read, uh, mid-level target audience is pastors. I think lay people would do just fine with this resource though. Next, the first volume in the commentaries for Christian formation series. Do I think that this will end up being one of the top 10 commentaries on Galatians when more academic reviews come out? Yes, I do. Oh, I forgot to say that about John. I think this one will be very well reviewed. All of Karen Job's works are, but like Romans, John is a book of the Bible that has some really outstanding commentaries. Um, and so I'm not sure, but I do think this will receive great reviews. So back to Galatians. I, I do think this was going to end up being a top 10 commentary on the book of Galatians. And as I said, it's the first one in this series, so I would expect more in 2022. It's from Erdman's. And let me show you the inside of it. 
So if you're familiar with the new perspective on Paul, um, this is this is the, NT Wright has written other commentaries before, but they've been they've been shorter and more introductory work. So this this represents a a fuller explanation of his ideas and um, in part on the new perspective and book of Galatians, of course, this is a great place to have that conversation. And so it's over 400 pages in length on the book of Galatians. So I think that this is going to receive excellent reviews, excellent academic reviews. It'll be interesting. It's one of the series, not necessarily this volume, but the series, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, pastors and lay people receive it. Um, it's an, it's an interesting approach. It's a unique approach and um, it could very well find, find a place among readers. It'd be interesting to, I'm always kind of interested to, to see how new series are received. This one was well received. I think it probably will be among the top 10 commentaries on the book of Nehemiah and Ezra when more, more, um, academic reviews comes out. It also completes the NIV application commentary series. Although now I see that there's some uh, revised editions of commentaries. So it took what, about 30 years for the series to be completed. And, um, and, uh, this is the last one in the series. And now, yeah, I think I can't remember which volumes I've seen it revised, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's such a popular series. I think they will continue to revise volumes or maybe replace volumes as well. It's just, it's a big brand. When your commentary series turns into a brand, sometimes you, sometimes publishers will start replacing volumes. Uh, lay people do fine with this series. This is one of the most beloved series um, for lay people uh, because it's it's easy to understand. Um, there's not a, there's not a ton of exegetical depth that might be the downside, but there's a lot of information on making the text relevant for today, as the subtitle says, from biblical text to contemporary life. So that's Ezra and Nehemiah. All right, Hosea uh, by Jerry Huang in the Zondervan Commentary on the Old Testament series. Jerry Huang, I forget where he's from. Singapore, Singapore, Singapore Bible College. Uh, will this be one of the top 10 commentaries on the book of Hosea? I think it probably will be when the reviews come out. This is uh, an excellent series. A lot of New Testament books now are out in the series as far as the, ex the ex Zondervan exegetical commentary in the New Testament series. A lot of the New Testament volumes are out. I'd have to dig to see which ones aren't out yet. There's only hmm, maybe five or six in the Old Testament series. Um, but I know that more are coming out. I, I'm, I know for sure. I think maybe even December. Uh, can't quite remember. I'll have to dig into that a little bit uh, in preparation for my video in a couple of weeks. But um, I, I do think this is going to be a, a well-reviewed vol volume. And, you know, in previous generations, it was common to in, for Bible commentaries to kind of lump together all of the minor prophets. And the trend in more recent years is to give them their own book, their own volume. And that's what we have here in the book of Hosea. So there'll be a lot of depth in this volume. And the layout is really excellent. One of my favorite layouts of any commentary series. So easy to find what you're looking for. And the writers stay on track with that particular subtitle that they're working on or the, that they're writing in. And it's just really great. Um, so here's a volume that combines minor prophets Jose to Micah and I do think that this one is going to be one of the top 10 commentary series uh one of the top 10 commentaries for these particular minor prophets John Golden Gay has been writing a lot I see him um he has come out with a lot of books uh the last few years and I see that he's coming out with more as well so that'll be I'll be interested to share that with you so this is this is the continuation of the Baker commentary in the Old Testament books for a long time. There was just the wisdom books found in this series and they've expanded. Actually, John Golden Gay wrote the Genesis, came out with the Genesis volume last year, I think it was. And, um, and his new commentary that's coming out, it might be December, is actually not part of this 
this series. It's part of the NICOT series on Jeremiah. I don't think that one's out yet. Um, so this, these are more advanced. The, the target audience is pastors, but it is helpful to have some experience reading biblical studies materials, reading commentaries, and even having some background in the original languages. You don't need to know Hebrew in order to utilize this commentary, but the depth, uh, but it is, of course, the exegesis is, of course, built upon the um, Golden Gate's work in the Hebrew. So it would be helpful, but not necessary. So almost a 500 page book on Hosea through Micah. Next, uh, I'm, I'm sort of cheating with this one a little bit because this is Bruce Waltke. Uh, so what's new about this is the shorter commentary version of this uh, commentary. This is one of the best reviewed commentaries on the book of Proverbs that's found in the NICOT series, a new international commentary on the Old Testament series. And it's in two volumes in that series. So if you got both new, you know, it might cost you 60 or $70 would be my guess. And so there's this one volume, um, shorter commentary that, that kind of takes the, the, the best of that material in those two volumes and condenses it to a little under 500 pages. Um, pastors are still the target audience. I don't think lay people would be the ideal reader, but some who are experienced, um, would, would do fine with it, I think. And it's just very well reviewed. So, um, if you're looking to save, you know, maybe $40 and not have all of the information found in those other two volumes, then this one would be, this one would be a good option. So, and it's already a top 10 commentary on the book of Proverbs. Dale Ralph Davis continues to write commentaries in the Focus on the Bible commentary series. I think that, that Dale Ralph Davis commentaries are 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 well reviewed. They're well received, especially by lay people who are looking for resources for devotional work or Sunday school classes, small groups. Um, Dale Ralph Davis has well reviewed commentaries in First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, uh, others as well. Do I think that these will be among the top 10 Luke commentaries? I think probably not. Luke, like the other Gospels, is, is pretty well served with Bible commentaries. So it's not to say that these would receive bad reviews. I think they'll probably be well reviewed for, for their intended purpose, but probably not cracking the top 10. All right, Mark in the Story of God Bible Commentary series. So I showed you the Exodus volume earlier. So this is the Mark volume by Timothy Gombus. Can't remember where he's at. Professor of New Testament at Grand Rapids Theological Seminary. So every passage is discussed in, in three sections. Listen to the story, explain the story, and live the story. So it is, I, I liken it to the NIVAC series, the NIV Application Commentary series. I think it's pretty similar. And um, same publisher. But the series is finding an audience, so I think pastors like it. And there are some uh, well-reviewed volumes already. Do I think that this will enter the top ten commentaries on the Book of Mark at some time in the future? I think probably not. But again, it's not to say it will get bad reviews. Um, and I think that people who like this series would, would love having this volume in their library. So those are the commentaries I have to show you for 2021. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.